Today's episode of In the Trenches is brought to you by System 12 Guitar Method. Sign up today at RyanRoxy.com. In the Trenches with Ryan Roxy. Hello, folks. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another live stream episode of In the Trenches with Ryan Roxy. I am your host, Ryan Roxy. There you go. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> oh, man, I'm the one that's coughing now. Wait a second. Wait a second. I'm all healthy. I feel healthy. Or at least I have a lot more sun than I did a week ago, friends, because maybe you can see it through the uh, lovely HD that we are recording in right now. But uh, yeah, I've been down here in South Africa. So welcome to our South Africa special of In the Trenches. What does that mean? What are we going to do? Well, that means we are going to play some uh, ITT clips that have been, you know, ones that stick out, ones that have been popular, ones that might be aren't so popular, but I think you should see anyway. And in between, we're going to pepper it with uh, some little stories and uh, what those people and what those artists are up to. <coughs> so as always, wow, someone's coughing in the background and I hear that, but oh, we're going to bring them on in just a second. But check it out first. What's that thing that you do? What's that magic thing you do? Hit that subscribe button if this is your first time watching us on In the Trenches. Appreciate it. And uh, if you'd like, uh, if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make your way on over to the Ryan Roxy official YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. Uh, appreciate it. So right off the gate, right out of the gate, uh, you see that we're going to uh, announce a couple new sponsors for In the Trenches because there's a couple really cool announcements that I have at the end of the program, at the end of the episode. But right now, I'd like to bring on our illustrious producer, Vic Chalfont, so we can talk about our uh, new sponsors. And uh, Vic, where you at, buddy? You cough and all. How Dude, you feeling? Dude, I didn't know. I, I didn't realize <laughs> I was not muted. I'm not used to being on here. <laughs> and, and everything sounds so good, doesn't it? It, it really is, does. Uh, well, here's, the, here's some of the big news, folks. We have a new sponsor in the trenches. It is Buyer Dynamic. Buyer Dynamic uh, headphones and microphones. I'm using uh, the Avento Avento wireless. Although I have, I do have a wire hooked up to them today. They are Bluetooth. And uh, because I'm on vacation right now, hello, how you doing? I'm on the air though. Oh, but so there it is. That's my wife. That's Bianca. It doesn't matter whether we're in South Africa or Stockholm. She is always like coming in the room. We're, we just started, babe. I'm shooting. All right. Oh, you're shooting. Oh, shooting. have fun. She's out. <laughs> she's out on the lake shooting. Shooting uh, guns. Gun. Shooting guns with her brother. Yeah. Nice. They, apparently, nice. there's yeah. There's hunting dogs here. There's um, hunting poodles. Yeah. There's brys. There's a couple things about South Af South Africa that you should know about. They have instead of a barbecue, they call it a bry. It, that's a it's a big deal. And there's a lot of beer. Uh, there's a lot of alcohol. I don't know if you saw us last week with uh, Mr. Alex Kane, but uh, there's a lot of, this has become my favorite glass that I've used, not just on episodes of In the Trenches, but pretty much every night here in South Africa. So um, I'm, I'm using the In the Trenches mug, the official, <laughs> the official producer's <laughs> mug, drinking some cat fight coffee. There it is. Cat fight coffee. We love them. But you know, I put up a, a post today because Bianca, my wife's brother, has a cof uh, Faber Coffee Smith uh, company himself. He actually roasts the beans, so he's a coffee roaster. I know that. Uh, so does Cat Fight? Do they roast it on, or, or do they um, they package it? What do they What do they do? Tell me about oh. Cat Fight. Let's let's I hype them up. Even though they're not one of our sponsors, in the middle of our hyping a sponsor, Vic puts up. We're gonna hype sponsor. something else. <laughs> Well, and look at this, the new Roxy Army shirt. Oh, dude, you're all swagged out. I love the fact that you wore a Roxy shirt just for the of fact course. that, uh, you know, we we don't have a, a special guest per se, but everybody's a special guest, I would say, uh, today on every one of the clips because I thought about it. This is our 68th episode, Vic. We've wow. done, um, and pretty much uh, for the last year, we've been doing it every single Tuesday. And you people in the trenches, you people in the chat right now, you've been uh, supporting it every single week. We can't thank you enough. We've The rat, 
the rat. Look at he's in the in the chat right here. now. I see him giving me a but, hard time, of course. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's really quick go back to our sponsor right down there, Buyer Dynamic. I'm uh, using the event though wireless right now. Uh, next week when we're back uh, to our regular studio, um, I'll be using their microphones and another set of headphones as well. But I'll talk about more about that next week. But you should Vic should talk about what you're using with Buyer Dynamic. What is it? Yeah, I got the uh, Creative Pro bundle and it comes. With yeah, he's got a little smart microphone the, now. The, yeah, the Fox microphone. This is badass. And then I'm going to want more airtime. You're just going to want oh. more airtime. <laughs> I really don't. Um, and then I've got the DT770 headphones and these things sound great. Well, I love it. Hopefully it sounds good for everybody watching. Well, there you go. Thank you, Buyer Dynamic, for uh, sponsoring the podcast. We're going to get another uh, podcast sponsor in in just a little bit, but we're going to start the show off with a bang of a clip, a bang of a clip. And and guess what? All your comments are coming up. Watch if you if you want one of your comments to come up, Vic will put one of them up right now. Someone in the chat, put it up, Vic. There you go. Hello, Fred Hoffman. Cool with a K. Lynn Barker, snazzy Vic. Hey guys, how y'all doing? Let's start off with though uh, one of our biggest and uh, mostly highest viewed artists, Joe uh, Satriani. Um, I used to call him Joe Satriani, Joe Satriani, but then I, when I did research for the actual podcast, when I interviewed him, it's Joe Satriani. That's the way he calls it, Joe Satriani. So I've been saying it wrong for all these years. One of my biggest guitar heroes, I was saying it wrong. So Joe Satriani has a story about uh, a little bit of a Spinal Tap moment um, when he was on the show, and he wants to talk about it with Alice Cooper. And uh, Vic, let's run that first clip with Joe Satriani in the trenches. And it all fast forwards to you uh, with your association with my boss, Alice Cooper. You end up, you yeah. and Steve Vai end up trading solos on like a uh, uh, hey, stupid! Feed my Frankenstein. How did that whole thing come together, and how was your experience with Alice? Oh uh, well, for, see that picture there. That is a real wonderful Spinal Tap moment because my guitar actually never made a sound on that particular <laughs> live show. <laughs> it was it was a moment of humility where you get invited out for an encore and the amp doesn't work. And no matter what the, all the techs did, they couldn't get the amp to work and Alice God. had to start the song. You know, I mean, there's thousands oh, yeah. of people waiting for the song. Um, but besides that, um, I have to tell you that when I was in high school, um, you know, I was suspended and thrown out for a week because I did an impersonation of Alice Cooper, shirtless, covered in blood, and my friend's boa snake. And I terrorized... Uh, the, the theater full of younger kids, uh, just in an effort to try to get my friend elected president. I mean, we were completely unelectable <laughs> as kids. Did you play that? Did you play the song "Elected" by Alice Cooper? <laughs> we, I think it was. Uh, I think it, it, he had just come out with that because he was in town playing at the Long Island Coliseum that week. So when I appeared on stage and they're playing Alice Cooper and there I am, a lot of people thought it was Alice Cooper for a second. I, Cause oh, from far away, my really long, you know, mid seventies hair and I had the right. snake and everything. Um, but uh, yeah, explaining that to my parents was difficult, uh, but I, I loved Alice Cooper. I used to see him. I saw him at the Long Island Coliseum. I had a, a great poster of him hanging himself in my bedroom, which, you know, caused my family much grief because they were always worrying about me. But um, I just love Alice. Alice. It's, it's just Alice. It's just Alice. He, he always had amazing guitar players in his band. It, the music, it was always interesting. And I always got the joke. Uh, and so um, I've always been a really big fan. And uh, when I got connected with him through Bob Pfeiffer, who I think had signed him to Hollywood Records. I think yes. that was the connection. Or was it Epic? Was it Hollywood or Epic? Maybe Epic it was Epic. He, he signed Hollywood. He had Hollywood Records, like, basically when I, right before, or right during uh -huh. the time I was with Alice when I joined in 96. So it had to have been Epic before, because Bob Epic, Pfeiffer yeah. has been around. Bob, Bob Pfeiffer, folks, has been around longer than uh, rock and roll, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so, yeah, he got us connected, and, and I, I had the... 
this distinct pleasure of playing on four or five tracks or six or something on the Hey Stupid record. Um, it was just, for me, it was so important just to make that connection uh, to, to, to work with him. And, uh, and you know him. He's just an amazing human being, a great artist, yeah. and we're lucky to have him. And it's so cool that he's still giving us you know performance well, and music and I, art i thank you joe i thank you joe because i've studied your your music for years off those albums and i've always tried to make it my own after getting frustrated trying to learn your parts for <laughs> <laughs> because no one can play th that that uh sort of off of uh, feed by frankenstein the, the only two mm. people that can really play the that sort of solo off each other is you and steve i mean there's just no doubt that that that's the two of you and and we we do our best to come up with make it our own but we always yeah. try and put that spirit of that time in so thank you for that for you oh you're welcome yeah. <laughs> there you go i love it thank you Feder rock for putting a little bit of a uh nice little t uh credit at the very end you know what one thing i noticed about about myself is that it doesn't matter what episode for the last 52 weeks or 68 weeks, I guess, at this point, but we've been doing it consistently for over a year now. Um, there's always some sort of straw in a glass, and a lot of people ask me what this is. I say health water. It's health water, folks. But we're not sponsored by a certain health water just yet, but they might be soon. Mm. Look at this. Live from South Africa. From South Africa, man. This is a South African special. That was a cool story about Joe uh, Satriani. It was I, obviously um, a trip to have one of your guitar idols on that you, you know, used to play open for as a band. You know, when I was 16 years old, my band Fair Warning and the name of the band Fair Warning, you can tell who else I was influenced by right off the, right out of the gate, um, would open up for his band called The Squares at a little place called uh, The Stage in Danville. And I got to tell you, folks, even back then, Joe Satriani's playing was so lights out. He was always a cut above. He has that magical way of putting uh, blues rock and shred rock and putting it all together into just one unique player. So uh, very happy to have him on uh, in the trenches and very happy to have you guys. You know, uh, let's move on with another clip shall we? Um, because we're, we've had some uh, guitar shredders, some guitar heroes. Uh, this is one of my favorites that we had. Uh, and I guess, you know, just like those one name guys, whether it's Sting, Seal, Prince, uh, I guess we all just know him as Satchel. And Satchel gave us, uh, because we have the System 12 guitar method, he gave us a, uh, a guitar lesson of sorts, and we started talking about, you know, uh, tips on how to play guitar. So uh, I want to run a clip right now. I, I'm going to have Vic come back on, on screen in just a little bit after this artist, a satchel clip. But then um, we'll talk more about uh, what we've learned with guitar and the System 12 guitar method. But first, I want to hear Satchel's tips on how to play guitar. So Vic Chalfont, run it, baby. So th that's uh, guitar lessons that I, of uh, course, that I teach. Obviously, I don't have to tell you about it because you've taught guitar lessons at GIT back in the day. How do you feel about it? And uh, please don't put your uh, guitar lesson course out just yet because you know you're gonna you're gonna completely trump mine. You'll, you'll oh, I don't know about me. that. You'll swamp me on that one. But actually, I think I have a a, a pretty good system to. Uh, learn fundamental guitar and sort of go from the basics and start playing songs, basically your first lesson. How do you feel okay. about that? People learning what, what, what is one of the most important things that you could maybe pass a torch of rock on to up and coming guitar players? What would you, what would advice would you give them? Oh, like if you're, if you're just starting out or if you've been just playing starting for a while. Out, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> well, I mean, it's, it's a great time to start learning guitar because there's a lot of, a lot of ways you can, learn guitar there's obviously you know a lot of stuff online there's your method um yeah. i think it's really important i think it's a great thing to to uh to have a you know a method or and and because if you just dive into it and you don't really know where to start there there can be so much coming at you that you don't really know where to go so so you know if you have something like system 12 where it starts you with the stuff that you really need like for a foundation with 
you know, uh, chords and how they go together. And, and power you know, chords, you, you know, know, power chords. Stuff. Yeah. I mean, start starting simple is a really good thing. And, um, but you know, there, there's a, there's a lot of great ways to learn how to play guitar. Now you can go on YouTube. There's a lot of inspiration out there. Obviously we there's so many great guitar players that have uh, existed throughout time. And, and, you know, you can also take lessons from people on zoom. Now I've been giving zoom lessons, uh, for the, for the last couple of months. And, and, uh, there's a lot, you know, you can, you can sit, you know, anywhere in the world, you can sit on a zoom lesson and ask, you know, specific questions. And so people can be at any level and, uh, and have lessons all over the world now, which is great. Um, that that is, access is really important, isn't it? Because I, I do the same thing on, on my site uh, w that where, you know, you can have, you can book a lesson. As you said, earlier, <laughs> Zoom is always a little bit, uh, it, it, it's a little bit challenging, but we can get it done. It, and it does work because that accessibility is finally there because we have the time now. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, it, you know, I find that, you know, it's not even, it, I mean, the, it's one thing, it's cool to be in a room and actually play with people. And that's, that's great. But, but you can do a lot through a zoom lesson. You can, you can get a lot of points across um, a lot of uh, you can really help a guitar student a lot by teaching them ways that they can actually improve on their own. Right. So like, so a, a guitar player isn't just going to improve by jamming with me or being on a lesson with me. I want them to like go away from that lesson and uh be able to you, you know show them things that they can sit and and you know learn you know daily and 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 maybe use their time wisely so that they can improve faster than otherwise because i know that when i was a kid i used to practice for a long long time and i yeah. probably could have gotten just as good in half the amount of time if i would have been more focused on the right things to practice yeah. but uh there's a lot of great ways to learn guitar now and and uh there's a lot of really good good guitar players out there that uh, that that I learn about every day. So it's it's fun it's fun to meet new kids that are up and coming. And, and those uh, eleven year old that come up and <laughs> that, 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 that that smoke it on stage at a Steel Panther show. I mean, yeah, whether yeah. you take a lesson from myself or whether you take a lesson from Satchel or whether you just go on to that YouTube channel, the advice that I try and give people is on YouTube take advantage of that player because not a lot of people know on that little circle dial is in the settings you can slow the video down to keep in the same pitch but go down to three quarter speed honestly if i would have had that when i was trying to learn you know eruption or trying to learn some sort of randy road solo uh any randy road solo for that matter it would have saved a lot of vinyl it would have you know and it would have saved me hours of frustration so take advantage of that speed control that's that's one thing that I tell people. You yeah, know? I didn't I didn't actually know you could do that. That's really cool. That's, uh, you didn't? There's, no, I didn't know that. That's awesome. I mean, there, there's definitely things about technology now that make learning the guitar much much e much easier. And uh, and you know just just being able to hear the notes and to be able to see you know video of somebody's hand the way they are holding their hand the way they're holding their pick those are all things that are really important. Um, one thing that even just talking about it right now, like when you're starting out on guitar, one thing that I did when I was a kid, I, I practiced for three years and then I had to change my technique because I was, I was very uh, tight and I had to learn how to like, just, you know, be relaxed when I play. And that's, I think that's a very important thing with any instrument, like just being able to play relaxed because you want to be able to play for hours at a time without getting tension in your shoulders and things like that. But, um, those are all important things to focus on when you're learning how to do anything, whether it's a golf swing or a, or a, hey, there's that rat again. Um, I know. Or, or, or guitar. I think they're planning or, a coup, those rats. They're definitely sure, planning sure something. I, I'd watch your back, man. No doubt about it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. There you go. There, the host has unmuted your mic. Why did you, why did you mute my mic in the first place? There you go. Well, folks. No, now you're on mute. You were <laughs> you were muted. coughing. You were coughing, and they were blaming me. I for wasn't. It. You was did. I coughing? You, yes, and and people were hearing you coughing. Oh, cough so I had to mute you. Cough gate. <laughs> cough gate. Well, thank you very much, Satchel. By the way, for for giving us uh, uh, some really good tips, and I love the way he says it with the golf swing. You know, you, you actually practice it like a golf swing because Lord knows I've been practicing my golf swing way more than I've been practicing guitar the last two weeks out here in South Africa. 
Man, that sun. You get the sun. You see, you see, I got a little bit of sun, folks. It, me and Vic right now, we're the salt and pepper shakers <laughs> that you might find. Can we order I'm those? Very off salty. The, <laughs> well, can we order those off the uh off the off the Roxy shop at this point yet? Probably, probably can. <laughs> Pro probably can. So Going back to, uh, thank you very much, Satchel, by the way. That was a really cool episode, and, and uh, I saw some comments on there. I love the fact that I can actually comment on my own commentary. I like um, how you post your comments up, too. And I do. I, I, given the opportunity, I will, as long as I'm not unmuted, because I, I wasn't coughing. Was that really me? You were me? coughing. I, Lynn, Lynn Barker came up and said, is that Vic coughing? And I was muted, so it was you. Uh, you know, uh, let's just leave that unsolved. Better left unsolved, I think, you know? It's solved. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about our second sponsor. Thank you, Buyer Dynamic, because we can hear ourselves. And when I am playing through the live streams and you hear my guitar, uh, whether I'm doing the uh, Sunday live stream Sundays or whether I go out on this next big rock show uh, tour that with Alice, or if we start doing some uh, Los Angeles tours or any sort of touring that we can get back to some sort of normalcy of going back out and playing and live shows, I am going to be playing out of our next sponsor's equipment called Hughes and Kettner. And that is another one of our sponsors that we'd like to thank uh, for uh, being around, uh, supporting the show, just like you guys are in the chat. Um, I've talked about their stuff called the Amp Man. I've talked about uh, the floor model that they have, the Black Spirit 200. I'm going to talk and, and do more stuff with Hughes and Kettner in the coming months. So again, Thank you very much. And thank you, Vic, for putting up their logo. I'm sure they will be very happy. Yeah? Thrilled. <laughs> they will be thrilled. Of course. And check this out. Now, check this out. There's guitar players. We've had Joe and we've had, De uh, we've had Satchel. But guitar playing is just one aspect of it. There's a whole nother aspect of it when it comes to songwriting. And uh, we were lucky enough to have on a couple months back and check it out, all these episodes and all these clips that we're showing are uh, available in the long form. So if uh, Federock, if she she's great enough to put these clips together, if you are enticed by the short shorter clips, we urge you to go check out the long form uh, podcast of In the Trenches where we have at least an hour of, of deep discussions. Sometimes we go down some different rabbit holes. And this next artist in this next clip, uh, we went down a few different rabbit holes, maybe even a couple glory holes, if you catch my drift. Um, <laughs> he was a very cool <laughs> guest. A mean, very he, cool guest. Desmond is so talented. Yeah, We're talking about one of uh, the most popular and uh, most the biggest selling successful songwriters, you know, living La Vida Loca. Um, uh, poison, you know, poison, poison. Um, but of course, the topic that I had the clip about was uh, his association, Desmond Child's association with Kiss and uh, Bon Jovi. So it, it is how uh, the relationship with Kiss started, and it eventually evolved into this relationship with uh, John Bon Jovi, which uh, it resulted in amazing songs like You Give Love a Bad Name, Living on a Prayer. Uh, you might have heard those a couple thousand times in the last couple of weeks on Classic Rock Radio. But uh, Vic, let's uh, put up that clip with Desmond Child because you are listening to uh, In the Trenches South Africa special. I love it. Let's do this clip. Stanley was uh, instrumental in working, you, you, the two of you working together and some introductions made with Paul Stanley, right? Because didn't Paul introduce you into the world of John Bon Jovi? Well, Bon Jovi was opening act, uh, one of the opening acts in a big tour that Kiss did in Europe. Um, and uh, he had made friends with John and said, hey, you should try writing with Desmond. So John gave me a call. What happened was that the first time we got together to write uh, at Richie's house in uh, in New Jersey, you know, I had a title in my back pocket, You Give Love a Bad Name, literally in my back pocket, written on a little piece of paper. And I pulled it out and I said the title. And that's, you know, John looked me straight in the, 
in the eyes. And that's when he gave me his first glimpse of the billion dollar smile. You know, I saw nothing but teeth. And uh, it, it, it was a great moment. And uh, he had a song on his first record that he had written called um, Shot Through the Heart. So he's not one to let a good hook go to waste. So he brought that in and it was shot through the heart and YouTube, darling, you give love a bad name. And uh, that was our first, high, you know, three way high five. Nice. Nice. Well, so then, I had always so then I, the idea of writing for other people went out the window and they kept the song. As you, as you do, but that, I mean, launched their career completely. Um, I always say there is a story behind every song written. That story sort of had real life characters. Everybody brought something to it. John might have brought that line, but you actually brought the characters of that song. You know, I mean, um, John had always said that the characters he had in mind when we wrote that song were his high school friends, Bonnie and Joe. And I think Richie, once I spoke to him, he said, well, I was thinking about my parents because they really struggled, you know, when, you know, to make ends meet. And then um, I was thinking about my girlfriend uh, who she and I co-founded Desmond Chandler Rouge, Maria Vidal. And she was working in a diner that was like a singing diner in New York City called Once Upon a Stove. And um, her like waitress name was Gina Velvet. And that's why I brought in Gina. So when I first mentioned Gina, I thought Gina and Johnny, you know, because my name is John, because I was thinking about us, my my real name, John Barrett. And so uh, John said, no, 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 I can't sing Johnny because thing people think, because I like the alliteration, Gina and Johnny. Uh, but uh, he said, you know, people think I'm singing about myself and it's like, right. And then he said, Tommy, which was like a sound alike. And that's where Tommy and Gina were born. Who was on board with it more? Was it Richie or was it uh, John that wanted to record it? Oh, with Living on a Prayer. Like we wrote the song and I, and I think that they demoed it. And, um, you know, John, had, they had written like a hundred songs. You know, I was only a co-writer on a couple of them. And um, he wasn't really that enthusiastic about it because he thought it was sentimental like it was a little bit slow or mid tempo -y when he wanted to rock. And uh, that was his vision. And um, so Richie and I literally got on our hands and knees, half joking, half for real, and begged him to cut it. Just try it, just cut it. And uh, with the magic of what was happening in Vancouver at the time with, with uh, their producer, Bruce Fairburn, the late great, Bruce Fairburn and Bob Rock, they brought it to life in a way that was way beyond my imagination. I mean, I was just like, wow. <laughs> a couple things about that clip, all right? I um, One, I didn't realize uh, that, uh, that we own the same Desmond Child and I, John, uh, I guess I can call him John now because he told that great story. Uh, we own the same black bandana. Yes, we do. And he has written such classics as, uh, you know, Living on a Prayer, You Give Love a Bad Name. And just so you know, um, I'm calling out you, Queen Bodica Radiant, I think it was. She said, I, don't, I only like Poison with uh, Richie Cotson. No, when I was talking about Poison, I was talking about the Alice Cooper Poison. And the Alice Cooper Poison uh, was co-written by Desmond Child. So he's written all those songs. And uh, as it was pointed out in the comments, I have wrote such classics as Smell My Finger. So there you go. Sort of balances itself out, don't you think? <laughs> I'm enjoying this sort of South Africa special. In fact, so much, I'm going to go right into another clip. The entertainment just keeps coming. A cavalcade of stars, if you will, folks, because um, it's getting darker here in South Africa. When it goes, uh, when the sun goes down, that means I've got to, I'm going to get the hook, not from, um, not from Vic Chalfant. I'll get the hook from Bianca and uh, we will go. Oh, there you go, Natasha, trying to learn poison today. 
Well, there you go, Natasha. I know that Natasha is a big uh, System 12 uh, Roxy Guitar Army cadet. And if you are interested in uh, the uh, Roxy Guitar Army, well, have we got a commercial for you then? Uh, I think maybe we'll hit that after this next clip, clip uh, Vic. And because this next clip, talking about Poison and talking about Alice Cooper, let's bring a little bit of uh, Alice Cooper alumni up onto the program. What do you think about that? I said it right. <laughs> Apparently, I say a few words wrong, and that's in the heat of the moment of the podcast. You don't understand, you know, what it's like. You just don't understand how much pressure is on me. You know, Tuesday after Tuesday, I go on this program with these big stars, and, you know, I just get so – no, I don't. I don't get nervous. I just get tongue tied. And sometimes, you know, some of the magic health water that I drink out of the straw makes me a little loopy. But I'm not loopy because of the health water today. I'm loopy because of all these clips in the South Africa special. I think we've stumbled upon something, Vic Chalfont. This is kind of fun. You know, I, I'm digging it. So let's bring on some Alice Cooper alumni. Uh, this was a cool story that uh, we had. Uh, with one of our guests and guitar player, Orianti. And she was talking about Steve Vai and one of her in jamming with Carlos uh, Santana. And there might be a couple audio things because that is one of the things with our guests. Um, we do urge them to sound check, but because their status is so high, they don't do sound checks. You know, Alice Cooper don't do sound checks. The Alice Cooper band does a sound check every single day. But Alice Co Cooper doesn't come up and do sound checks. Once in a while he does, though, when we're learning a new song and putting it into the set. But uh, this was about we the audio might be a little bit uh, iffy. But again, if you want to see the entire long form podcast, which I urge you to do, uh, go on, head on over to Ryan Roxy Official and hit that subscribe button that might be right there. Right there as you speak on our YouTube official channel. And uh, you can see all these long form videos without all the comments. Because today with all these clips, you're seeing comments from that episode plus added comments because you guys are in the chat. So let's run that clip of Orianti talking about Steve Vai jamming with Carlos Santana. And basically, you know, I wish we had subtitles for her Australian accent because it's a beautiful accent. But damn, it's hard to understand sometimes. Vic, run the clip and you'll see what I mean. <laughs> had, um, a ton of amazing role models that you're, you've are you been able to learn from over the years. And you mentioned one right off the bat, Carlos uh, Santana. But like I said, growing up, even before that, well, there's a shot of you and Carlos right there jamming. I'm, I'm going to get to that story in just a little bit. But even before that, at age 14... Uh, and I think it's age 14, Steve Vai, who's obviously one of your, you know, growing up heroes, he oh. invites he invites you to play on stage or be the opening band for his show? Or how did that work? And who was the band? Or was it backing tracks? It was, it was actually my first support. Um, I signed a management deal when I was 14, right? And that was my first support ever was opening for Steve Vai in a nightclub called Heaven Nightclub in Adelaide. And um it was really daunting because i mean i used to read a lot of guitar magazines and whatnot and, and steve i had this article it was like this metaphysical article in in the uh magazines he was like dressed in like you know alien love secrets he was covered in silver paint and then he was like shredding like no tomorrow you know they always put like a cd on the front cover of, the, of those uh you know magazines back then so i would hear some of this stuff I'm like wow like this is crazy it's so good and um so i was really scared not only being my first support but opening for freaking Steve Vai, you know what I mean? And of course. I'm a 14 year old girl, it's predominantly men in the audience with their arms folded going, what the hell is she going to do? So yeah. I'm like going like, out there with a backing tape too, which I made myself in my studio. And um, I was, let's just say that was probably the most nerve wracking experience. And Steve was watching, um, you know, side of stage and, and um, yeah, I, I played for, I guess, 30 or 40 minutes, something like that. And, and it was definitely, a crazy experience. I got through it, thank God. Um, and and the fob actually it turned off, so I could hear it was a side wedges. Um, so I just had to click to come in. I mean, the whole experience it was so weird. But I got through, and I guess he 
Steve saw that and he just saw that I was like totally just really driven and loved playing. Well, you were guitar. going for it, right? You yeah. were going for it. At 14 years old, you're going for the performance because that's the one thing that I know about you from playing with you for the years that we played together in Alice Cooper Band is that you did go for it. Once, once it was stage, you know, once you hit the stage, it's go time. Yes, irritable zombie time. <laughs> There you go. A little bit of Orianti. And uh, that brings us kind of to our halfway spot, folks. We are already halfway through our South African special. And um, again, appreciate you guys showing up week in and week out. I do have a special announcement to that's going to happen at the end of the episode. Uh, I'm going to announce who our next week's guest is. And it's a good one, folks. It's a good one. So stay tuned. But... If you're interested in starting your guitar journey, um, I would urge you to, to go down that YouTube rabbit hole and uh, figure out, you know, if you want to learn that way. And if you do, good on ya, as Arianti would say, good on ya. But if you want to learn it with HD, three different uh, angles, uh, tablature, note, and uh, video all in one platform. And uh, this being your guitar mentor, this is my backstage pass. This is your guitar mentor. I urge you to check out the System 12 guitar method. And I think we have a little commercial that we'll talk about that. Vic, can you run it right about now? That would be good. Hello, Come folks. On. Ryan Roxy here. And thanks for watching and supporting all things we are doing over here at the RGA, otherwise known as the Roxy Guitar Army Headquarters. We'd like to invite you to start your own guitar journey with the most comprehensive and easy to learn course that's out there today, the System 12 Guitar Method. I've taken my 40 plus years of experience of playing guitar and combined it with some of the best tech and guitar life hacks to come up with a system that'll get you playing not just the guitar, but entire songs in a very short time. Check out the links provided and make sure to enjoy the lessons. And of course, enjoy the ride. Now, back to the show. I look so weird without uh, reading glasses now. How am I going to go back to <laughs> Vic is is hacking? He's hacking up one of his kidneys, folks. If anybody needs a kidney, I was just contact. Sneezing. No, <laughs> I'm you're shot out of a cannon today. All right, get 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 on screen. Come on, uh, get on here because that's, on. we're halfway through. I'm having fun, man. You know, and I had and to sneeze. I, I was muting. Okay, <laughs> it looked like you were literally. Trying to like cough up a kidney so you could donate it. Was a it, it was to simply a sneeze. Mike Usnick. Mike Usnick is always on the lookout for a a kidney over at the Pink Sock episode. Uh, a Pink Grant, Sock podcast uh, sent a note and said she's very excited about your uh, amazing accent that you were just doing. Your Australian accent. Did you like it? Good on you. Good on you. You know what? South Africans and Australians. A lot of people confuse them. The worst thing you can do is call a South African, like, uh, like uh, mistake them for an Australian. I found this out multiple times this last two weeks being here. You do not say, oh, it sounds a little bit Australian. No, it does not. All right. South African is on to its own. And, and you should come here. Folks, you should come here. Toto was right. It's all about Africa. In fact, let's run that clip of uh, out with. Uh, let's run that clip when I did uh, Toto when I interviewed Toto. Vic, run it. Of oh, you don't have the clip. Oh, you no. don't have it. Oh, okay, great. Thanks, Vic. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our halfway point. Let's have a musical break, shall we? And so um, we'll probably get like banned from YouTube for doing this, but no, we shouldn't because it's our own version. This is our version that we did with guitarist Nita Strauss. In the Trenches favorite and Hollywood vampire, Tommy Hendrickson. Uh, yours truly, Ryan Roxy, plus Glenn Sobel and Chuck Garrick. This is the musical interlude that would normally come at the halftime of an Alice Cooper concert. Why not make it the halftime at a In the Trenches South Africa special? Uh, let's play that uh, little musical interlude, shall we, Vic? Let's do it. Nice.
heads he speaks are true. We're all humanary stew. We don't pledge allegiance to the Black Widow. Oh, we didn't finish it. Okay. we. I, I was waiting for the live episode. I was waiting for the way we do it live because I'm so used to hearing it. But uh, yeah, a little bit of Alice Cooper for you. And, and all the comments coming in saying how much you miss it and how much you want to be back out there. Uh, just know you that you want to You forgot to mention that Dave Rattenberry did that video. You didn't um, even talk about rat. I was leading up to it, Vic. Thanks a lot. Thanks for really. It's all about the... you. All about you. Wow. Well, anyway, I was going to have about a five minute soliloquy, and I did say the word soliloquy, right? I didn't say it right just this now. <laughs> uh, it was going to be a diatribe about how amazing Dave the Rat Rattenberry edited that. And that footage of those black balloons is exclusive that uh, Dave Rattenberry should actually get the patent on and sort of uh, sell that eventually one day to Shep Gordon because those black balloons were only used one show, folks, at the um, O2 Arena, and I believe that was 2019. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. 2019 O2 Arena, it might have been, um, was that with the original Alice Cooper band on that show as well, or was that a different time? I don't know. Uh, now I'm now everything's getting hazy on me. But it was the O2 Arena, and those were the times that those black balloons came out and schools out. So that little nugget you can win in any sort of bar, uh, bar quiz, music quiz, or pretty much ending up in a bar fight, I think. But uh, welcome back to In the Trenches South Africa special. I am your host Ryan Roxy, and if you have not changed the channel or uh, gone on to watch some sort of sports video uh, on YouTube, I implore you to uh, subscribe to this channel right now, uh, the Ryan Roxy official, because you can see all these videos, all those music videos that you just saw um, right there. There it is. Vic Shalfoner producers pointing it out. But thank you very much, Rat, as well as another RGA uh 
team member, if you want to say call it, like if we were working at Superstore or some sort of Walmart sort of vibe, we have a team member. He's part of our team. It's his birthday today. I thought he'd show up. I thought maybe he'd give us a grace us with a little bit of a, you know, hello, hi and bye. But if he's not, I understand he's working at the record store, working at the music store, putting in his, grinding out his gig, which he's really good at. But uh, the CEO of Balachi Records and uh, RG8 team member, Scotty Hagen's birthday is today. So happy birthday, Scotty Hagen. Everybody, say, say happy birthday to Scotty on his Instagram, as well as following Dave the Rat Rattenberry as well. So um, our next clip that we're going to get back to, hey, this show is moving. It's moving today. I am on fire, Vic. You think you think I was like Ryan Roxy in the 90s <laughs> at some sort of club late night, two o'clock in the morning. All right. This comes from our good old buddy, Gilby Clark. You love him. He just put out a new album called The Gospel Truth. And um, we had him on the program. We had him on In the Trenches. He was down in the trenches a couple months back. And we were talking about the Los Angeles scene, the Los Angeles-based rock scene when we both played in a band called Candy and uh, that whole Sunset Strip hair metal, if you will. Oh, there he is. There's the whole South African family, the voice of In the Trenches. Tess Faber is here with us. But let's go to that clip, Vic, where we talk about a bit of the uh, good old days in the Sunset Strip with Gilby Clark. How about that? We and I met yeah. each other in the maybe early, mid-80s, right yeah. around there. And um, we, I joined his band, which was called Candy. And from that day on, then all of hair metal exploded, that whole cat house, Ricky Rackman, Tammy Down scene. In fact, there it is, our producer. <laughs> Got a lot of hair there. <laughs> that was a lot of hair. Okay, hold on, folks. I want to come back on. I want to just, 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 I have to say something. I, no, I was going to do that. Hold on. Where? There I am. Yes, I know. I'm stored. I've, I'm taking over a little bit. Vic doesn't like it when I'm, when I, I don't think Vic likes this, this uh, format so much. It's, it's just where well, there can now, be two of us running things. I know. I know. It's kind of like the puppet master and you want to be the puppet master up there. But, uh, and we're both putting up comments, folks. You know what, folks? If you found your comment winding its way up onto this show, it was me that put it up there. It wasn't Vic, just so you know. There it is. One second. Huh? Can I have an estimate on time? An estimate on time. There it is. There's Bianca coming Some in. Things never change. <laughs> dinner is dinner. Dinner is dinner. I'm going to get the hook. We are actually working our way through. It's going to be in about another half hour or so. Is that yeah. good? Like, we all good? Eat, after that, we eat She's very you. sparkly. Is that is that South Africa? Folks, okay. if you want to see a map of South Africa, there it is. That's all of Cape Town this right is a there. South African brand called The Fold. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Uh, we are just giving out endorsements all the time. Half an hour or we eat without you. All right. Half an hour you eat without me. There you go. <laughs> That's the hook, Vic. That is the hook. <laughs> <laughs> but wow. I, I want to get back to that Crack picture. The can, whip. We just, can we just get back to that picture? It's whip, know. not whip. It's whip. whip. Do you even know how to get to back? Okay. Now look, folks, that is hair metal. That is the definition of hair metal. Uh, that was before I started wearing hats and beanies for image. And, you know, then hats and beanies out of necessity. <laughs> but this was just with... This is what Aquanet will do to you. This is the how long damage. did it take you to get those pants on? Uh, the, why were you looking at the pants? I'm well, talking look, about you got the strings hair all down your pants. Those were conchos, dude. They were conchos with little pieces of leather. But just look at that, Steve Stevens. If you're watching this, Steve Stevens, you are the inspiration. That was my and, the, and basically the whole band. So that's me and Gilby in the center. Jonathan Daniel on the left of that shot. Jonathan Daniel is now an entertainment mogul. And of course, on the far right, that's John Schubert, another in the trenches alumni. What do you say? <laughs> I say you pronounced it right. <laughs> Let's move on with a clip and then uh, we'll go on from there because now dinner's the countdown's beginning. <laughs> I'm on the clock, folks. And a lot of hairspray, if you guys can imagine. I think. The best way to describe how we met in Candy is that 
if you guys want to go and watch that episode of uh, Brady Bunch, uh, the Johnny Bravo, where he where he wears the suit, because I kind of fit in with you guys at that point. Yeah, yeah. And, you're perfect. But explain explain to people what candy was and how it kind of fit in the scene, but it didn't either. Yeah. Well, candy was interesting because, you know, like you said, you know, hard rock and metal was really happening at that time. And to be honest, you know, I was really never a metal guy, you know, a hard rock guy. I mean, I, you know, of course I liked, you know, bands like Judas Priest and Black Sabbath, but you know, I, it wasn't really my thing. I actually liked a lot of English, you know, uh, music you know like i, I love the clash uh, i love the pretenders when they came out in like 1980 so candy was really just about four guys that kind of like different music and we all kind of had that ramones kind of black hair leather jackets torn jeans look but our music was much more on the pop side you know it's like people would say we we're like the bay city rollers which we really weren't i mean we had like loud guitars and stuff but the music was definitely more on the pop side you know we definitely idolized like billy idol and things like that but uh, so, yeah, when the band started, it was the early 80s. And then, uh, you know, we had made a record, uh, you know, we were, uh, did a video, we we're on tour and all this kind of things. But, you know, things weren't really working and bands like Poison and Motley Crue were really getting big. So we kind of thought there was time to make some changes. So uh, our singer wasn't really get, uh, getting along with the band and stuff. So he left the band. And uh, and we found you, Ryan, and uh, you were like the perfect candidate for the band. I, fit, I'm a, I think I fit the leather jacket. I definitely use the same brand of uh, of hair dye. Do you remember that brand? <laughs> it was black Azure. I uh, probably still use it today. <laughs> The best karate <laughs> rock and roll. I always wear hats, but Gilly, you don't have to. That's great. Uh, what happened? <laughs> no, what was it? Black Azure. Uh, 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 I got these boys. I, I can't. Re I, you know, I can't remember. But it yeah, was, it was like uh, black and blue or something like that. Yeah. And it was definitely Aquanet unscented. I always oh, yeah. tried to go for the unscented, but sometimes you had to sacrifice the scented. <laughs> the show. You had yeah. to do whatever was left over in the store. <laughs> you, just, you just ended up smelling like. <laughs> <laughs> so that look, that was supposed to be our international sign backstage, Vic, and you put me up. Like, this means cut the clip. Thank you, Gilly Clark, by the way. But I just noticed something. I beat myself up too much, and, and apparently everyone can hear me while the clip is going of me sipping on my drink. <laughs> and obviously, you can tell my drink's empty. So uh, that magic uh, health water needs to be refilled in just a little bit. But I realized something there. I beat myself too much about my hair. And you know what, folks? I am it's it's still there. I just want to show you it's still there. It's just not as thick as it was way back in the day. So, you know, I'm not gonna beat myself up so much. You know what? <laughs> I look beat up right now. <laughs> Vic's just laughing at me. What the hell? Oh my god. I'm having fun tonight, though, on this South African special, as you can see, with my new buyer dynamic headphones. They sound great. I don't know. I might be acting like a fool, but you know what? I sound good doing it because of the buyer dynamic to to headphones. <laughs> I'll get one, trust me, when I go out to eat. But uh, we have a special announcement coming. But Gilby was right, man. Uh, those days back in the Sunset Strip, they were they were really fun. But guess what? There's never the good old days. I never want you people out there to think that these, you know, I want you to always think the present is the good old days because the past is nostalgia. The future is unknown. Right now, you guys hanging out with us in the trenches, these are the good old days, okay? And next Tuesday is going to be another ep sort of good old days time. So let's always look at right now, the present, hanging out here as a group as the good old days. Can we make You're that? You're like a shaman. I am a shaman. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, I'm, I'm going to be like Russell Brand. I'm going to be like, I have a big beard. You know what? That's the one you thing. You should just wear I'm a robe. <laughs> it would look cool. I, I'm half Mexican. I can't grow a full beard. I can only just grow, grow, grow a mustache and a, what do you call those? A goatee. Goatee. And yeah, I got that John Karabi gray. That John Karabi salt and pepper growing in there. But anyway, Gilly Clark, I've always been um, an admirer of his, uh, this is rock and roll attitude and his hairline. But folks, you know what? I realized something. I'm not going to beat myself too much up about it. Um, 
My hair is going, you know, slowly, but it's still there. But I, but you know what? I love wearing the beanies. I love wearing the hats. It's just part of the image now. So if you guys like it, then subscribe. If you don't, then start following Vic Chalfant on uh, Instagram. Either way, it's a win-win. Hey, us. follow me anyway. Come on. <laughs> One of my favorite guys that's like a bunch of those. I don't know what it is with bass players. They always wear two sets of glasses. Uh, Dennis Dunaway did it. I found I, I thought I saw that trick, and Dennis Dunaway has been on the program, folks. If you want to see any of these clips, go check out Ryan Roxy official. Um, but our next clip, it's how this bass player uh, and the origin of his peace sign with his band Enough's Enough. I'm, of course, I'm talking about the uh, multi-talented, multifaceted uh, Chips Enough. Super great guest. But he did wear two pairs of glasses as well, and you can see it in this clip. So uh, run that clip, Vic, of uh, Chips Enough explaining how the peace sign uh, evolved into his band Enough's Enough. That'll be great. And when I do this, Question please from, uh, let don't the people show me. speak. And this is from at Cooper Eyes. Uh, the peace sign is often included in your works. What meaning do you give that? Because, yeah, the whether it's been from the early logos of Enough's Enough, whether it's been through many of the uh, promo shots and, and sh pictures of you over the years, the peace sign is a prevalent part. What is uh, the significance besides peace, obviously? Yeah, we own that peace sign, by the way, with the little notches cut out in there. We had to cost us 70 grand for that. So that peace sign with the little notches cut out around it, Wait, wait, wait a second. Let me see it. Let me see it again. The little notches. The little notches. Oh, okay. Well, that's worth 70 grand right there. I don't Could know you about just that. done a peace sign or a smiley face? I'll bet you the guy that did the smiley face with the all the uh yeah. <laughs> he didn't pay a cent, but somebody <laughs> paid 70 grand. Back in those days, was that echo record money back in those yeah, days? Yeah, record, record money. Yeah, that's Certainly that's recoupable. recoupable. We yeah. we were putting that first record out. We we rented a dilapidated hotel room out in Chicago, Illinois. Had a guy named Tony Diario come out there and shoot the band. Wonderful photographer. We bring a bathtub in the room, a couple motorcycles, a bunch of booze and stuff. And we took these pictures. We spent about 20 grand in a photo shoot for a day out there. Then went back to New York. Derek seen it. He goes, Okay, uh, I'm I'm gonna give the pictures to Doc McGee, who's managing the band with Bob Brigham now, and All we'll right. come up with a game plan on what we're going to do with for an album cover. And Doc's seen that, and he goes, I heard the record, and I'm looking at these pictures of you guys in a dilapidated hotel room with you holding a bottle of, of liquor and uh, Donnie smoking and Derek in the background on a motorcycle. And he goes, that's not the image these songs, that's not what I see when I hear, when I hear these songs. And he looked at Donnie's arm, and Donnie had a peace sign on his arm, and he goes, now that would be a good cover right there. Doc says, he goes, because it's a peace sign and it looks good and it means good things. And that day we changed it. And, the, and instead of having that picture of us showing how promiscuous and the substance abuse problems we had before we even had a record out to putting a peace sign out there, which is hope and love and praise and being grateful for where you're at right now, that to me spoke volumes. So we changed that day at that dinner meeting, we changed our whole image not with our faces and our look and hat and shades and everything, because we've always been colorful and flamboyant, but with the album cover, instead of having our faces on there, that peace sign, because it leaves it open to an imagination for right. anybody to know, well, here's the band, enough snuff. I wonder what exactly what this is all about. You can't really tell by the cover where if they would have showed that picture, it might have just, might not have been, it might have been the wrong way to go. I got to be honest Couldn't with you. you Chip, couldn't you have just actually taken a picture of Donnie V's arm and saved yourself 70 grand? No. I'm just saying, couldn't. I'm just saying, you just take yeah, a picture not, of his not arm. A bad, and it's not a bad thought, but he had a little bit, some other stuff on there as well. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs>
Enough books that require a ladder. There you go. And you know what? I wanted to uh, a shout out to uh, right here, if I can put this out, to G GZ Zanson Van Juren, because they, they, they put it on the super chat. Check this out. That, that right. folks, Z-A-R, those are uh, South African Rand. So oh, he, cool. he actually contributed to the show in South Africa because he's part of the South African, you know, sort of following that we're building up here with this episode. Do you know, you know? who this That's is? That's the whole I, I don't I don't believe I do. He's not family. I thought maybe he was a that family is, member. He's not a family member. No, but thank you for watching, GZ or G G G G J. Say that five times, folks. So, you know what, Vic? I know you haven't been drinking the magic uh, health water, but say GJ five times, and I guarantee GJ, you. GJ, 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 GJ. Wonka, wonka, it's, wonka. All right. Never it's mind. the cat fight coffee. <laughs> That's because we're on a little bit on the East Coast. You know what? We're on the southern tip of, South, of, of Africa. That's why they call it South Africa, Cape Town. And uh, we are on the same time zone as Europe. So we're a little bit ahead of everybody there in the States, folks. All right. That means it's five o'clock somewhere. Or guess what? It's seven o'clock somewhere now. So we're two hours into it, the South African special. And uh, we have just a couple more clips before we have to say goodbye. But not until we have that new announcement uh, that we are talking about for next week's guest. That's a big one. Should Gonna we do it one. now? Should we, should we drum roll it right now? I your call. It's your show. Oh, it's my. Uh, well, you know, it's a it's it's a cooperation it's it, it's sort of a collective it's becoming um folks i don't know how we did it i don't know how we managed it to pull it off well actually joey did a good job we're going to give joey a big shout out for pulling this one together but you know that we had um we've had a couple intellectuals in fact most of our our guests that we have on i consider intellectuals very inspiring uh lots of musicians we've had comedians we've had actors um, and some intellectuals, as we had Eric Weinstein on a couple weeks ago as well. But this next Tuesday, and what is the actual date? It's April. Please, Vic, tell me sixth, what that date I believe. is. I think it's the 6th. April 6th. Thank you very much. Hopefully, Federock put it on the actual ad. But, folks, drum roll, please. Guess who we have on in the trenches? Who is coming into the trenches? We have clinical psychologist and YouTube rock star. Jordan Peterson. Yes, folks, screenshot that right now. That will be our guest for Mr. Jordan Peterson, Dr. Jordan Peterson, Dr. Jordan B. Peterson will be our guest April 6th at 12 p.m. New York time. Make sure you mark your calendars right now for that. That's a big one. Okay. He is a really cool guy. Very, very smart. So looking forward for that interview. Very much so. Uh, let's move on with some clips. All right. We just got a couple okay. left. Um, this is a great one that we had with uh, some Alice Cooper alumni. In fact, so more An than alumni. alumni, family, Alice Cooper family. Talk about we had Cheryl Cooper on the show um, a few months back, and she was talking about her and Alice uh, making out. So the first time they sort of hooked up. It's kind of weird that she just shared all this information on In the Trenches. If you want to see the long-form video, you have to go on to the Ryan Roxy official YouTube channel and subscribe and watch this long-form video. But let's check out the clip right now, Vic, of uh, Cheryl talking about the first time her and Alice uh, sort of, you know, got the nookie nookie, the whoopee whoopee. <laughs> Legend has it that it was perhaps – in one of those holiday inns that one uh, that Alice had a, a dancer meeting and you guys had movie night. I'm not sure what it is that the band and the crew was doing uh, during that time, but at one, at, at some point you guys all met in one of his hotel suites for movies, food, hanging out. And then you guys struck up a conversation. Is that the way it actually went down? Or is that just another one of Alice has never let the truth get in the way of the good story. I want to hear the real, I want to hear the real story. It's pretty accurate. Um, first of all, he's totally my type. Those icy blue husky eyes and those dark eyebrows and just <laughs> everything about him. I thought, you know, I have a boyfriend. He has a girlfriend. Not interested. And then he opened his mouth and began to speak. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I really like this guy. I want to know him better. 
And we really did become friends first. And um, it happened one night that we got into a conversation and I had no idea everybody had left. Now you're gonna say, sure you didn't. I didn't. I, you, I were just so, you were just so enraptured and involved in the conversation. You know what it is? It goes beyond that. I think a real friendship begins when one person can say to another, you too? And we just kind of cemented right there. And the conversations got deeper, funnier, uh, more surreal. And this happened on several occasions. And on the night where everybody had left the room, it's going on two in the morning. I looked down at my watch, no phones. My watch said almost 2 a.m. I said, oh my gosh, I got to get back to my room. So, this has really been a great evening. And he looked and he said, well, aren't you going to kiss me goodnight? I thought, well, what's it going to hurt? So I kind of leaned in for a quick peck and he grabs the back of my head with his hand and just <laughs> stole it there for about 15 seconds. I thought I was going to die. It was <laughs> That's his move from poison. So he uses his... <laughs> That's the so movie funny. he does on Cold Ethel. <laughs> It's the same. It's the same. I'm not jealous of the doll, but I could be. <laughs> there you go. Well, you actually have been cold Ethel at one point, I'm sure, through all these tours. And, and there's a lot. And that's another thing that people should know about Cheryl is that she's been so many characters uh, in the Alice Cooper show um, just from our time of playing together. Go ahead. Well, that's what love does. Uh, let me tell you. Love does, and I've been a spider, a snake, a dancing skeleton, a <laughs> dominatrix, a tap dancing tooth, a giant dancing chicken with a machine gun, a pink dancing poodle, more on that later, <laughs> um, uh, uh, dressed as a man for It's Hot Tonight, as a gangster. I've been in gang fights, dressed as a man. I've been a nurse. I've been uh, Mademoiselle Guillotine. It just mm. it continues. So look what I do for love. Everything uh, you did it all for love. I love it. Yeah, um, yeah. We're going to talk a little bit about those characters a little bit later, but I do want to move on because I want. I, I'm so enraptured with this. This love story that's happening between you and Alice in in the seventies and the late. 70s. Sorry, that's my microphone. I was going to say, I, thought, I can't hear you. I know, I know. See, I, I have a little microphone here that I put on mute. But uh, again, next week you'll be seeing us with our buyer dynamic full throttle. You mm. know, buyer dynamic, I will have all the stops. Are, 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 there's, what, how do you say that? There's no stops or do you pull I never, the stops? I don't know what, what you're you? saying. I don't know what you're no, saying. Like, no. <laughs> You're going to pull, pull all the pull stops throttle. out. You're pulling all the pull stops out. Pull all the out. stops out. Yeah, I'm pulling. I, I don't know what that means, but I'm saying it. There's, there are words coming out of my mouth right now, and there no holds barred. I'm going to have the biodynamic microphone. I'm going to have the, the biodynamic headphones, even though I do have biodynamic headphones on. Um, I'm going to have the Hughes and Kentner amp. I'm going to have the cat fight coffee. I'm going to have the... <laughs> Faber Smith coffee roaster in here. I don't know if you did. You see the uh, post I put up on my Instagram today? It was the uh, Faber Smith coffee, the actual roaster. He was doing a. Uh, that's Jared, folks. Do you have an Instagram? You know, I do have an Instagram. Thank you for thank I'll you have for to asking. Check that out. I'll have to check that out. What? Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Look at this guy. Look at this guy. You know what? You co-produce one South African special because you know what. You're not producing this one, buddy. You're co-producing it. Because I, if you like any of your comments, I'm the one pulling it up. I'm, I'm the one putting up the comments. See that one, Stephen Fisher? I just put you out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how many I'm go funnier. up. Let's see how many go up. All right, don't worry. Hold on, folks. There you go. Oh, there you go. Wait a second. It's about Vic. You know what? Enough about Vic. More about me. There's both of us. All right. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Vic. Hey, Martin. There you go. So just uh, more one vodka. more clip left. No, 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 no. no? I'm going to go have dinner now with the, with the family. 
And uh, again, folks, thank you so much for tuning in to our South Africa special. It's uh, It's been very, very enjoyable for me. I've, um, I've actually taken a little bit of a break from having that pressure of, okay, how is the script going? How are the questions going? I've just been able to chill and sort of reflect, sit back and reflect as you will. Next week, I'll be in a robe, just like your Russell Brand. <laughs> Stanley came for a visit. Oh, you know what? I want a dog. I have a, wait, you know what? I have a dog too. Let me see if I, hold on. Hold on. Coco, Coco. I've been trying to get Roxy to buy a dog for so long. No, you guys want dog porn? He's got Stanley. I've got Coco. Hold on. Coco. I don't know what Coco, Coco doesn't come to me, but, but when Coco wants to come, uh, most amazing dog. Most of, I, I, I've never fallen in love with a dog as much as I've fallen in love with Coco. That's She's just because so you cool. haven't met Stanley yet. Well, no, Stanley's definitely cool. Stanley should have his own merch channel and merch shop. <laughs> he should. <laughs> I can't believe you're not wearing a Stanley shirt right now. But, um, well, there you go. Well, no Coco right now. But, folks, one more clip we have. And it's one of our, you know, He's a, he should be sort of part of the in the trenches fabric. He should be sort of an honorary host because he's been on the most times of anybody else uh, as our guest, and he's a legend. He's one, but you know what, folks? And he'll and he'll be the first to admit it. He has the crappiest Wi-Fi. I know a lot of our guests have bad Wi-Fi, and I know that Michael DeBars is is. Probably the gold medal, the for pinnacle the of bad bite. internet. <laughs> it's what you shoot for, you know. The can't hear you, bro. Awards will eventually come to the in the trenches. We should do the in the trenches awards someday. But uh, you know, the can't hear you, bro. Award will always be in uh, sort of memory of of don't say in memory, but in tribute of Michael DeBars and Michael DeBar. Sorry again, another name I had to relearn. You know, and Michael DeBar, even though he has an S in the damn name. Why the hell do you do that to us? You confuse us, Michael. But uh, what what Michael DeBar's lacks in Wi-Fi, he makes up for in pure rock star vibe and attitude. And so does our last clip. Because this guest, even though his Wi-Fi isn't the best all the time, um, it's really really entertaining to have him on. Um, I'm talking about Michael Monroe, of course. And this is a story that I think you should check out. You should check out every one of his long form videos that we have on Ryan Roxy official. But this is one of the stories that he had about uh, one of his idols, Stiv Bader's dying on stage and coming back to life. So Vic, if you can run that clip, uh, it'll be our last clip of the night because Michael Monroe, you are our honorary member of In the Trenches. Here you go. Thanks to Von Black again <laughs> what for do you that say? contribution because he just contributed some money to give us your down payment on your new uh, nose flute empire. And he was really? asking, yeah, he did. Um, I'm not sure if we can get his uh, comment back up there, Vic, if you can. But uh, he basically, he must know you because he's calling you Mikey. Hope you and yours have a wonderful holiday. And I, he wants to know if you can share any funny stories about our dear friend, Stiv Baders. Stiv Baders. So, yeah, yeah. So I know, I know. Shifting from shifting from Foo Fighters to Stiv Baders might be a little bit different. But do you have any nose flute stories about Stiv Baders? I didn't. I didn't know nose flute when I lived with Stiv. I didn't know the <laughs> nose flute yet. Uh, he loved Christmas. I remember the first Christmas after Razzle had died. He he uh, sent me. A, he gave me a Christmas card that said, "If a star should doubt, it would immediately go out." And, uh, don't uh, uh, carry on and, and have a white Christmas, white underline. Uh, but uh, I mean, did I tell you? I mean, I didn't tell you. Did I tell you a story about Steve when he died? No. I mean, no, he, no. he died on stage and he came back to life, you know, by what? accident. He, he used to hang himself, you know, it was part of his stage act. He was, it was this little guy, he was really light. And uh, when he, uh, he would climb up the lighting rig and put the uh, mic cord around his neck and hanging there he would be holding himself up but uh for a while he would like be hanging there for look like he was hanging and he one night his hand was a bit sweaty this is the loss of a new church gig it wasn't the dead boys but it was the loss of the new church and uh the roadie noticed 
that he was like turning blue and there was piss pouring down his leg. I was like, something's not right. They took no. him down and he was clinically dead for, for quite a while. They, they took him, they brought him back to life. They uh, took him to the hospital and, uh, and he was, he actually survived. But uh, I mean, once you died on stage, how are you going to stop sounds that? Sounds a little like a Hollywood vampire, if you ask me. Yeah, go, well, you go. know. Okay, hold on. I, I, I press pause. So, Cause Vic, put put us on. Vic, come on. Vic, check, put get us full screen. This is Coco, folks. Look at Coco. Coco, I love you, Coco. Yeah, get now. Get Stanley. Coco, Coco's a little shy right now. Coco, I love you. Stanley, come check this out. Come here. Oh, look at this dog. Love this dog. There it is. Uh, Coco, yeah, there you go. Coco's left the building. <laughs> <laughs> all right folks I, i'm sorry that i had to stop that clip right now but coco is amazing right in and the middle of piss pouring down his leg <laughs> <laughs> on with the show do it Vic. <laughs> well, uh, alice has to guillotine and he hangs himself and stop it steve, the, steve actually did it for he real. actually did it oh my god yeah, yeah. <laughs> And the only regret he had was like they didn't even tell they didn't tell him until uh, uh, a week or two later because they they were kind of concerned about his reaction and his first reaction was like oh man I can't remember anything he wanted to remember the the out of body experience that yeah, was the only so regret could... that was his only regret <laughs> so, so there's a stiff story for you so you, so so you guys were roommates for how long did you guys live together. Mm. We lived together. Uh, I, I was taking care of his cat when he was uh, in London, when Hanoi was breaking up in 1985. I was taking care of, I was feeding his cat, Ziggy, for, uh, for you know, that spring when, he, when Steve was on the road. And then we figured we might as well move in together and, uh, you know, save, share the rent and everything. So we lived together that uh, about a half a year. Nice. And, then, and Johnny Thunders moved in too for a while. So all oh my God, that that's a, that's a whole movie ready to be written. <laughs> Johnny Thunders, Stiv Vader's, and Michael Monroe, and a cat named Ziggy. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Ziggy was a cat. <laughs> Ziggy was a great cat. Yeah. Oh man, it's it great. It was great, cat. Uh, yeah, so I, th there was never a dull moment. You know, I, I had to hide the speed from uh, from uh, Johnny because he would do. It was like the more I see, the more I do. It's just like he would come out of the bathroom and say, like this. He would go <clears throat> putting his sleeve down. Michael, do you have any more? I just dropped the gram in the toilet. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you got? Oh it was man. Amazing, but you know, what I think it would have been a household of do as I say, not as I do. That would have been a very good household to have that saying and do as I say, not as I do. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the more I see, the more I do. <laughs> oh, that's the worst one. Yeah. I'm Ryan Roxy, and I've taken all my years of experience of playing guitar, and I want to pass the torch of rock and roll on to you. Check out the System 12 Guitar Method. You're still muted. I know, I know, I know. Another bonus commercial. I, I, I have too many mute buttons going on. You're trying to control the show. I'm trying to control the dog. You know, we all have control issues here. But look at Stanley. Did Stanley fall in love with Coco in that last oh, clip segment? He was getting pretty excited oh, yeah. about that. They're a, they're a couple, I think. Coco and Stanley, they, they could live in sort of a retirement dog home. At one point, that folks hashtag dog porn. If you haven't fallen in love with In the Trenches on this episode yet, I just fell in love with the show a little bit more today, folks. I really Michael appreciate Monroe you is guys. such a great guest. He's awesome. We got to have him on for part four. Everybody, please uh, contribute to his uh, contribute to his uh, GoFundMe for better internet, and uh, we'll we'll get. <laughs> We're going to get him 5G. You know what? The push for 5G and Michael Monroe. That's what we're going to, we want to get him right now. But folks, we are heading out to the highway. Um, again, 
it's been a very special episode from down here at the uh, everyone says down under. You don't get more down under than the tip, j only just the tip of South Africa, folks. We are having the South Africa special of In the Trenches. Uh, thank you very much, Vic. You didn't think you were going to co-host this with me, but you I didn't expect to be on this much. But, but you know why you are? Because of that awesome biodynamic Dog? equipment. Oh. <laughs> no, it's our sponsors. It's, of course. It's, it's, it's biodynamic and Hughes and Kentner. And you know what? Again, one more little Easter egg for you folks. Next week, our guest, if you hadn't heard it and you're just tuning in now, next week our guest will be Dr. Jordan B. Peterson. I thought you'd put up another ad, Vic. I didn't know it would be the same one, but it's okay. That's oh, all right. <laughs> April 6, 12 p.m. Eastern. If you if you don't like this ad of Jordan B. Peterson, don't worry. Federica Roby will send you and everywhere. inundate you with ads. This next week. And I'm calling upon all of you that are watching right now to uh, tell two friends and they can tell two friends and so on and so on and so on. Just like the shampoo commercial from the 1970s, you can make In the Trenches a, a worldwide phenomenon with our guest Jordan B. Peterson next week, folks. So, um, yeah, it's been a great one. And if you want to follow this guy over here right there. Vic Chalfont. You can find him on Instagram. Uh, Vic, you want to put your Instagram information up right now, or do you not have it? You don't. Right there. There it is. And, and I'm at, not Roxy, I'm at Ryan Roxy on Instagram. But uh, we would love for you to follow us on our YouTube official channel as well. So uh, appreciate all the diehards um, for showing up week in, week out. Again, it's been our South Africa special. It's been a good one. What do you think about this? Been fun, amazing, and Bianca uh, had to had to put the kibosh on it. Well, she did not. She, she it's the whole family's waiting in the other room, and Coco's calling for me. Coco's calling for me, and here's the thing: the wow, now you and Bianca are in a fight. Wow, this is new. It's a joke. This is a big joke. one. This is this is all a joke. Do you like my accent? I love it. It's in. brilliant. <laughs> It's like we have Guy Griff here. You know, he's, he, it's, it's almost like Guy Griff from the London Choir Boys is here with us. Folks, oh, Who's ready? there it is. Who's oh, ready? No. <laughs> that, that's the open door hook. <laughs> you and Vic are fighting, apparently. All right, folks. Hi, Bianca. I'm, I, I'm <laughs> Next week, Jordan B. Peterson, folks. This has been the South Africa special. Thank you very much for tuning in. Until next week, enjoy the ride. Yes, yes, yes enjoy the ride. In the trenches with Ryan Roxy.